That's because my eyes. Yeah, yeah, back to. So just you gotta breathe through it. You just gotta breathe through it. It's back to the the, the expecting and the, the anticipating, and now it's the delivery. When you are waiting on God, you have to breathe through it because you're anticipating God doing what mm. he said. You, you, so you've gotten ready. You're, you're the mother that's gotten the, the baby room ready. You've gotten clothes. You might have even had a baby shower because you are anticipating. Now, you've gone past expecting. So your waiting is an anticipation. You know, it's the... It's the you know, I haven't had the luxury of, of being pregnant yet, and I say it's a luxury because I desire children. And the it's when my I, my niece or my sister they would just get so and those of you who are mothers so uncomfortable in that last month, you know. And it's it's that level you got to breathe through it. It's the delivery. It's those mm -hmm. what are those breaths called that they make out? Lamas. <sighs> yeah, whatever they be doing. Okay. So in our waiting place, we are often, this is just a note, we are often receiving con and conceiving. And there will be a birthing. You have to trust in that little box that says you will be receiving, conceiving, and there will be a birthing of God's plan and his purpose for your it. For your it, whatever your it is. Learning to breathe in your waiting place will help you to go through it with less stress and patience and frustrating, frustration. Breathing is a part of waiting right. We talked about waiting right. Dr. Susie? Yes, love. The second um, blanks on number 10, I didn't get those. Okay, peaceful and restful pilgrimage. Thank you. Obey. How can you wait? How you wait is up to you. How you wait is up to you. But obedience in the wait is essential. How you do it is up to you. Now, but we're going to tell you, we're going to talk about before these, uh, during these six weeks, what, how, how, it, how it should look. How it should look. And how it can look, even though you've been waiting a long time. Okay? Then you need to learn how to trust. Trusting him, trust him with your past and your present. What, and I said this earlier that I had to, I realized I really didn't trust God. I trusted him with my past and my present, but I didn't really trust God with my future. And it's good when we can tell him that. Yeah. I had to say, so it's almost like, like you was double-minded. Well, it's like okay. you believe so much you trust so much, but then again, you hit that question mark. Um, what double-minded means, not necessarily, but I get what you're saying. Because I didn't waver in that, okay, I didn't waver that he couldn't do it. I'm, I'm going to tell you exactly where it was. What I wavered in is, would he do it for, for you? you. Mm -hmm. I knew he could do it, yeah, and I know he would, would do it. Or would you do it for me? Mm -hmm. My stuff was so, and it is, so lofty. Can we, are you going for me? Because we look at our challenges, our struggles, our sins, our past. So I trust him oh, for my past. My God. My present. Jesus. But God, oh. what that requires. And so we start becoming religious. Mm -hmm. So do I need to do 5 o'clock prayer? Do I need to fast? every Wednesday. Do I need to, and all those are good if he's called you to do it while you're waiting on mm -hmm. him. But don't do it religiously because you're trying to get him mm -hmm. to do something. Mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Because you do not, you feel insufficient of receiving his love. And that's what I realized. The perfect love of God casts out fear. When we don't trust God, we're fearful. I know we say faith is the opposite of fear, I contend love is the opposite of fear. Mm -hmm. Because once I started letting God show me his love for me, I ministered differently. I talked to people differently. Because as hard as I was on myself is how, is how hard I was on other people. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't, I didn't receive his love. I didn't understand his love. I didn't accept his love. And so when we do that, it, it, and we could feel like we're double-minded, you know. Sometimes you feel like that, sometimes you don't, right? But 
if you grasp his love and he really does have a purpose and a plan for you, mm -hmm. and your desire is to please him even when you miss it, God, please help me, please. I don't want to do this. I don't want to treat people like that. I don't want to talk to people. You know, whatever it is, you just keep coming back. Didn't she keep coming back? Mm -hmm. She kept coming back and said he, she wearied him. He said, I got to do something. I gotta do something. I say this all the time. If God will do what pigs ask him to do, why won't he do what you ask him to do? He did. They said, don't send us back to Hades. We don't want to go back there. We don't want to go back to the abyss. Don't send us back there. Okay, go on, go on into the water. We are worth more than pigs, right? A little lower than the angels, right? I think that's what he told you. Yeah, so, okay, we're going to get through this, y'all. As much as we can. If not, we're here. So, um, trust. We must trust him. We must trust him. When we do not trust someone or something, obeying is very difficult. It's difficult. We do as we are asked expected or told out of obligation but not love and honor so we will do things out of obligation but it's not love and honor we're just doing it because we're obligated to do it but we want to do what we do because we love god and we mm -hmm. want to honor him and so in our waiting god i'm waiting because this is what you told me to do you know it's waiting on the bus you know because, you, you know, you're waiting on the bus, and because you get anxious, is the bus running late? Man, I'm going to mix my next appointment, you know? So um, you run in the store and, and you, whatever, or, man, i got to use the bathroom, but you know you're supposed to be waiting. And, you know, so all of this. But most of the time, our anxiousness comes because we haven't prepared. Because mm -hmm. had you done what you're supposed to do and use the bathroom before you got to the bus stop. Mm -hmm. We left the last bit. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't be out there doing the dance, right? Yeah, the and then you miss the bus. Yeah. And then you oh, miss the bus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It can be, absolutely. Anxiousness, the root of most things, quite honestly, is either fear or rejection. Yes. Those are the two spirits that most of the, your, our sicknesses that people struggle with, the root of it is often fear or rejection. If you trace it, it's normally fear or rejection or abandonment. And abandonment is a little different than rejection. Rejection is a spirit that comes from rejection. Say it again. Abandonment is a, is a spirit that comes from rejection. Um, can I switch it? It's a fear, I would think. Yeah, uh, I'm going to switch it a little bit if I can. So when you think about someone abandons you, they've been in a relationship with you, and then they leave you. Someone can... Uh, or, or vice versa. Someone abandons you, they have never had a relationship with you, and they just leave you. You know, they just abandon you. They just leave you on the doorstep. Someone rejects you, they've had a relationship with you, but they say something mm -hmm. about you I don't mm -hmm. like. Mm -hmm. And so within abandonment is rejection. But, but, but rejection also, doesn't necessarily come with abandonment. What about perceived rejection? Have you ever seen a perceived rejection? Mm -hmm. That's so deep. Mm -hmm. It is so deep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And ain't nobody studying you. You right. just think that you're... that's the enemy working right there. Mm -hmm. All the enemy, but yeah, <coughs> all of, yeah, yeah. And perceived or real, mm -hmm. you are accepted in the beloved. Let me say this, and I've, I've said it many times. God's reject, man's rejection is often God's protection. Uh -huh. What we, what we are. Deeming that someone rejecting you was really God protecting you from something. Mm -hmm. Now that right there, I can preach. Right, mm -hmm. right. Come on, man. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Ha. Glory to God. Thank so, you, Jesus. Yes, mighty, mighty Jesus. Honey, yeah. in these five inches I run, run he on. made that one come alive to me. So you got to be disciplined in it. The discipline of learning to wait and to wait right can perfect or rather mature you and your character. Perfect your character. And we'll end on this page, even though we have some more stuff. Though the discipline of waiting will force us to do a self-examination and submit. Self-exam and submit to his will. I'm lost. Self-examination and submit is the last two. You got them? The first sentence says, the discipline of learning to wait, to wait right, can perfect or rather mature you and your character. Through the discipline of waiting, 
we will be forced to self-exam men and submit to his will or we or we can or will choose to continue on and do it our way. Either way, waiting will be inevitable. A place and a choice of surrender is what's best. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. when you're talking, I just start thinking about stuff. I know, I know, it's okay, awful. it's okay. I'm sorry. And we will finish uh, page three next week. What I do wanna say about this as we talk about submitting and surrendering. I just want to read this, but we will pick this up next week. Um, when we're talking about submitting to God and surrendering to God, 1 Timothy talks about being content. And I, I want to make sure that people understand that contentment is not complacency. Being content is not complacent. And to be content is actually a place of strength. It's, it's, it's a place of strength when you can learn. It's a learned behavior. You just don't wake up and you're content. You have to train yourself to be content. That's why things can go be crazy around you. And you can come in and, and you're just as calm because you learn to be content. It's an inward peace that manifests outwardly. And it's, it's contentment is attractive. You know, people are like, dang, you're so calm, you know. And I'm not talking about the fake calm where everything on the inside is raging. Mm -hmm. And you just got that fake smile on your face. But it's real. It's real. And so um, as we, I want us to practice contentment. In the midst of everything that's going on in your life, just breathe. Take the word right out of my mind mm -hmm. and head. Mm -hmm. Just breathe. And, and we're going to learn and practice this week waiting on God in contentment, okay, and trusting him in what that looks like. And when you get a chance, read uh, what First Timothy says about uh, contentment. Godly, godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness ain't got nothing to do with your skirt being to the floor and your collar being to your neck, okay? Godliness with contentment is great gain. Mm -hmm. Having a God concept, a God way of thinking, with that contentment, trusting he's with me. Mm -hmm. He loves me. He knows what I'm going through. You know, why I'm tripping. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 